Hi there, my name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is a 7904 oscilloscope by Tektronics. So the 7904 consisted of these little modules that you would slide into this chassis. And here's another one. And there you can see the chassis. And here's another one. And here's a bunch of the modules that you can see. So all of this probably cost as much of a house back when it was originally purchased. And they were gonna toss it out. And I said, hey, let's take it apart first. This is from an era when stuff was solidly built and meant to be repaired. And I'm tempted to keep them and try to get them working, but they are really bulky and I just don't have the space. This module was tested by R.L. White. And wow, look at that. In particular, look at all of these trim pots. So this is state of the art in 1973. And look at this really long switch. It goes all the way back here. Oh, and this bit is from 1972. Okay, the other side of the board isn't very exciting. But again, look at these uh, super long switches. Wow, it goes all the way back here. And there's one over here too. Crazy. And what are these things here? Are these some sort of integrated circuit? Let's see, we have a ferret here, and then we have, we have just a bunch of, just a big loop of wire here. Why do we have that? Hmm. So let's look inside the sampling unit. Oh, this one dates back to 1968. Wild. And let's see. Oh, look at this giant switch here. Look at all that. Going all the way back to here. Crazy. Oh, I see. So this is the switch part. And then there's a knob here that's uh, part. So the switch is out here and then the knob is here. The knob goes all the way back to here. Wild. Okay, this box is interesting. There's a little calibration spot here and it says calibration void if broken. I wonder what's in here. Let's see, here's the other side. Calibration pots or maybe these are, these might be inductors. That's probably a pot, that's probably an inductor. Transistor. Interesting. So what about this delaying time base? It's got this neat matrix of switches up here. Okay, this one's a doozy. And look, we have some integrated circuits. Uh, let's see, let's get this board off. And let's see, these are LF351 op amps. Uh, 1458, I think that's an op amp. CA301, probably an op amp. I don't know. You could look that up if you want. This one has a copyright date of 1974. Ah, uh, actually, it would be a pain to get this out because this is actually hooked to a knob over here. Tensiometer, it looks like. And I think I just busted it. But anyway, but look at all this stuff under here. This is a giant switching mechanism. So all of those various spots Looks like they click various switchy bits in here. Wow, this is complicated. And what in the world is this thing? Why does it need all of this stuff? Oh, I see. This is really interesting. So if you flip this over, you'll see it's not a through hole part. It's a early surface mount kind of part. And it's one of the surface mount kind of parts that doesn't have leads coming out. So basically it's just pressure fit to the traces below it by those screws. That's really interesting. I don't think I've seen that kind of thing before. Huh. Oh, and here's another one of these things. I really wonder what those are. And check this out. There's a button here on the front, you know, standard 
locking button and it goes all the way back here. So when you press that thing on the front. So this is from an era where it was as much of a mechanical engineering challenge, probably designing this as it was an electrical challenge. I was looking for things to salvage and hey, I got this uh, connector here. There you go. And I guess I'm also getting a pile of screws. Okay, here's the other side. Wow, look at all these trim pots. Ooh, and we have more integrated circuits and we have one with a gold top here. Wow. Let's see, these are probably op amps, op amps. Oh, this is the first logic chip we've seen. 74S112. Okay, I just looked it up. That's a dual JK flip-flop. And let's see, down here, there's a 7400. I think that's a quad NAND gate. Yep, just looked it up. That's a quad NAND gate. And now this is something special. Let's see, tech 15501850. US 02761M, and this one's socketed, so I can actually take this out. And it's got a gold top, which means it's very special. And it looks like this is some kind of custom Tektronic part. Wow. That's just too cool. So I pulled that out of there. Okay, so that was a delaying time base. This is, I guess, a regular time base without the delaying. Okay, so this one has a 1969 date on it. So we're talking about era of the moon landing. It's got this box here. What's this box? Okay, Tektronic. Oh, is this whole thing one capacitor? Huh. Okay, so showing its age relative to the other unit, I don't see any logic chips in this one. Now, I do see a bunch of discrete transistors, and I have a couple of them that looks like there's a heat sink kind of thing connecting them. So I'm guessing these are matched pairs that are supposed to be thermically coupled together. Oh wait, and some of these transistors are in little sockets. Huh, okay, I have a transistor. But not all of them are socketed. Some of them are just soldered right into the board, so I'm guessing these had to be selected for some characteristics. Wait, are these socketed too? Oh, those guys were socketed. And let's see, I don't think they're transistors. Or maybe they're transistors pairs, or maybe they're early integrated circuits because they have a bunch of legs here. Let's see, I read 6933. Oh, wait, no, it looks like FU. Okay, that's unfortunate. Uh, Five eight seven seven four one three nine three. Huh. Oh, F is probably Fairchild, maybe. And let's see. This one says Ray. I guess that's Raytheon, maybe. Ray seven zero four four. Hmm. And look at how complicated this construction is. There's actually four boards here. Oh, and this little match pair. It was socketed too. And there's another one up here. Wow, on this side we have a whole bunch of socketed transistors. This is crazy. Oh, and not all of them are these little round tops. Some of them are these little flat top types. Hmm. Let's uh, get some transistors. Another matched pair on this side. We also have a few of these metal can types. Hmm. This one has six pins, so maybe it's a dual transistor or some sort of integrated circuit. I'm reading 7027DY-N. So earlier we looked at something called a sampling unit, and here we have something called a sampling sweep unit. Okay, so it's got the sort of craziness we've seen before with these big long switches and knobs that go all the way back here. But what's cool here is there's a chip here and it actually has a Tektronic logo on it. So this is some sort of custom chip they had made. Let's pop that out. So it says type 
7011 Analog Logic Board, copyright 1968. Let's see, this one says 15503, oh, sorry, 1550035, 73049 USA. Huh, wonder what this chip does. Let's see, here's the other side. And there is a socketed chip here. Let me pull that out. Ooh. And you know what? There are no markings on this chip at all. In fact, it looks like they've been scraped off. I've heard of people doing things like that in order to try to protect their designs. But remember, all of this stuff was made to be repaired by the end user. It's extremely unusual that Tektronic would actually try to hide something. Oh wait, there's something on the back. Let's see, it says P700G. So is this just a NAND gate? And they're marking that on the back? Is that a NAND gate indicator? But they scraped off what's on. This is so strange, I don't understand this. So I didn't notice earlier that the sampling unit also had a bunch of socketed, also had a bunch of socketed transistors. So let me grab those. Okay, this one was weird. This one wasn't really in a socket per se. There's just these holes in the board. So I guess like the socket is on the other side. Weird. Oh wait, here's another one like that. See this? Watch this. It just comes right out. Huh. Oh, wait a minute. There's a bunch like this. So some of them have these kinds of sockets that are big and chunky. And some of these, whoop, it's right there. Okay. Huh. More transistors. I don't have a hoarding problem. Yeah, a bunch of these, they just pop out. It shows you how much effort was put into making this repairable. Because each of these little sockety bits, you know, cost a few cents or whatever. And modern electronics would save that cost and say, don't bother trying to repair it. Hmm. Here's some sort of fancy chip in a can, a 723HC, whatever that is. And yeah, that's socketed. Uh, it may take me a minute to get it out. And there you go. There's the chip, and here's where it went to the board. I wonder how or why sometimes they decide to use this kind of socket that's off from the board a bit versus this kind where it's right on the board. Okay, going back over the boards I already looked at, it looks like all of the transistors are removable. So very easily replaced without having to get out a soldering iron and disassemble this and get to the other side of the board. That's amazing. Okay, so here I have a dual trace amplifier, but it's different. It's a different model than the one we looked at previously. Okay, this is like what we saw before, big long switch going all the way back here. And let's see, this is kind of like what we saw before. Here's a note. Caution, delicate board material. See manual section four. Huh, so there's some stuff in here that you would calibrate, I guess. And it's delicate. Huh. And under that can that said delicate material, it's a bunch of these. Little trim somethings or the other. Huh. Wonder what's so special about these. Okay, this is the last module. It's a dual time base, which we've seen before, but this is a different version. Okay, so this side of the board is copyright 1970, and it has a bunch of these socketed transistors, including some of these thermally coupled pairs. And let's see, this is a 7474. What's that? Okay, that's what I thought. It's a dual D flip-flop. And over here, looks like, what is this? Oh, is this another custom Tektronics chip? Now that's not socketed. Are these actually weird socket pins? Yeah, those are weird socket pins. So I was able to get this out, no problem. These are socket pins that are like right in the PCB. I have never seen those before, taking this stuff apart. And let's see, this guy is socketed, but it's a regular socket. Why did they use a regular socket here and these weird things over here? 
Okay, this is the other side of the board. Looked like there's a 741 op amp and it had these weird socket pins. Oh, you know what? I wonder if some of the ICs that I thought were soldered in on the other boards actually have these weird socket pins. We'll check that out. But in any case, this is a gold mine of these weird Tektronic custom chips. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, all of them with these built into the PCB sockets. Salvaged some of these, whatever these are, little connector pokey things. Oh, I see. So let's see, these have a center pin that connects to those weird socket kind of things. And then there's an outer ring, I guess for the ground maybe, or some other connection. This still blows my mind. So Tektronix had their own custom chips made. <laughs> yeah, these w little weird chip things, those are the same sort of deal. They're in these little individual socket pins here in the PCB. I'm not gonna try to get these out because actually getting these out without bending the pins is a big pain. Okay, in contrast, this guy, these are actually soldered into the board. 